So this is a review of the Greenworks uh, Weed Eater. It's an electric 40 volt system that uh, not very popular, not very well known. And I learned about these on Amazon.com, did some research on YouTube, very little information out there about these things. And when I originally looked at it, the reason I wanted to get into something was the systems approach with a 40 volt power tool system for their you know lawn and garden stuff and then I, I need to have a 40 volt full power uh, compact electric chainsaw that's cordless and my original intent was to go with a Ryobi 40 volt system the thing is there's absolutely no compatibility between a Ryobi 40 volt system and the Ryobi 18 volt system even though they have a full line of garden tools and 18 volt system they are all, for the most part, pretty weak, and um, and I, I, I can't, I, I, I'm not having very good luck with them. They will work slightly better with the P108 batteries, but I was in a market for a 40 volt system, looked on Amazon.com, carefully researched the specifications on battery amperage, tool power, tool size, all that kind of stuff, and I came across a Greenworks system. And the Greenworks stuff, because of the color scheme and everything, had me really thinking, oh, this is like a generic version of Ryobi. It's, it's, it's just the, uh, um, you know, they're going to put a different tag on it because they don't sell them at Home Depot. Well, I was wrong about that. I, I went, I carefully looked at what was at Home Depot uh, after I got this in, and I realized the Greenworks equipment is pretty much their own thing. Now, they're probably not made by Greenworks at their own factory, it's probably contracted, but they're a heck of a tool and a heck of a deal when you consider what's involved with it. Now I have one of these cordless weed eater things from Sears and it was uh, maybe half the price. It, it really weak, not, not, not a tool I could take all that seriously. I gave it away actually. And uh, But this battery they said it was a four amp hour battery. Originally, I got this whole system for the chainsaw. The chainsaw is yet to arrive. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and check out the weed eater because I could get the, the weed eater with a charger and a battery for not much more money than a charger and a battery. This battery is no joke. Uh, it's heavy. It's very similar in size and shape to the DeWalt 36 volt battery used on a DeWalt Tools. I almost has me wondering if they come out of the same contract factory. This is this is no joke. That's a big chunk of lithium ion right there on that on that tool. And I uh, uh, the, another really cool thing is they incorporated the onboard diagnostic. Okay, so you can tell what your your juice is. Little bar graph thing going on. Onboard diagnostic. There's also onboard diagnostic with the charger. I understand it's the same charger for all of their batteries. A uh, little color-coded thing on the front. It uh, can be used either flat or it can be hung up on a wall like this. And here's another really clever thing they do is they give you an exact measurement, 60 millimeter or two and three eighths inches for center to center on your screw mounts. You know, so you can just put that up on a little screw head thing and, and mount that on a wall. That's just a beginning of the clever little touches they designed into these things. The, uh, the shaft, mainly, mainly for shipping purposes on a lot of this stuff, when you're talking about shipping stuff all over the place and a lot of companies are doing it now, they, they give you a two-piece shaft. Okay, Normally, on, in a weed eater world, a lot of stuff that would have a two-piece shaft is a little bit weaker. Pro items are going to be a single piece and it's not a major burden if you carry everything in a truck. And one of the issues with two-piece stuff is it tends to be weak. If you have like the motor up at the head and then you have a, a, a turning shaft down there and then there's a link or a, a two-piece link in the shaft, it, it really weakens the tool. Uh, Ryobi has an entire system based on that. I think Black & Decker does. Uh, a couple other companies do with the little, little gas motors up at the handle and then you got a turning shaft down there, you've got a linkage, and it's usually a weak link in the system. On this, this, this handle assembly is pretty lightweight. All it really contains is a battery housing and a switch assembly on the grip. 
Another cool little thing they did was they put one of these little peg hanger things on there, although you could just put a peg through that end. And uh, it's adjustable, adjustable handles. You can loosen that up, slide that back and forth. You can also adjust the angle and pitch of this thing. So um, I, I, I'm not trying to sound racist about it, but you know, I'm, I'm 6'1", close to 300 pounds. And when I go to buy your lawn and garden tools, I, I want to buy lawn and garden tools that are sized for me. It, it's a reality that Latin Americans run most of the lawn and garden business in the United States right now. And what's been happening is, you know, they're, they're usually shorter people and tools are sized for them. Okay, and, and, and I'm starting to really run into that a lot. I'm running into a lot of lawn and garden tools that are not sized for larger people. This thing has an adjustment, which I think really helps. And although, it, to me, it does feel a little bit small and imbalanced when I put it all together. The, uh, but it helps to have the adjustments on here. And, and I, I would say, yeah, it's an american size tool. Uh, although, if you're like 6'4", you're, you're going to have a little bit of an issue running this thing. The... The cool thing about the screw together, because all this contains is a battery and a switch assembly, we're running the power through this little plug here. It's it's actually kind of heavy duty, the way this is all mounted on here. And, I, you know, I want to say that's not regular plastic. It's some kind of heavy duty stuff. The, uh, the shaft is also, you can just feel it's a little bit thicker metal. And uh, so the motor is in the head. And... I, I, what little testing I've done on this, and I'm going to do a little bit more, it seems like it's not a super powerful motor. And it's built here with their own little cartridge system. You pinch these little deals in here, this cap comes off, and then you, you have the uh, string on the cartridges. And when you order one of these things, you want to order some of the string cartridges to go with it. These, are, these little, little cartridges... You can re reload these with string. They're about four bucks a cartridge, or four or five bucks a cartridge. It was like thirteen ninety five to get a pack, a little three pack of these cartridges. And I'm I'm really not sure if they're compatible with any other brands. And if you forget to order these with a weed eater, you you get no spares. You just get the one that comes in it. The uh, the feed mechanism is apparently automatic now. When I talk about whether you can adjust between 20, 10 and 12 inches, what it boils down to is you get a little cutoff blade here on the edge and you can reverse it to get either a large circle or a little circle. I, I don't see a lot of use to make it a little circle or make it the large circle. There's also what they call a flower guard that folds out on this. For whatever reason, it wasn't included in my package, but I bought the what they call the return refurbished merchandise. As far as I can tell, the weed eater itself is brand new, but the package was a little beat up. The adjustments here, kind of interesting. We've got a press button here that we can use to adjust the pitch on this thing, which becomes an issue when you're using it in the edger mode on a little wheel. Okay, so you can use that in an edger mode. And then we can flip the entire head sideways by pressing on... Um, this gray button right here it's a little bit spring-loaded but won't go all the way so when we press that we rotate it and, it and it flips over and this is pretty much your regular weed eating mode the the only thing you really got to look out for on this is that these buttons if you're beating around in some bushes or something like that or flip this thing around you can accidentally press that and it'll spring over to the other position and that's it. That's it's not infinitely variable. It's just basically a 90 de 90 degree flip. The uh, the way you mount this is you just push one shaft onto the other shaft, tighten this thing down, and then it becomes a one uh, a one piece shaft. The thing is because it's heavy duty, very coarse threaded right here. Uh, really easy to take this thing back apart for transport. So if you're going to transport it in let's say the trunk of a car. You can do that. A lot of larger, real professional grade weed eaters, you can't do that because it's a one piece shaft. And because a lot of the homeowner grade weed eaters out there, they want to, um, you know, start impersonating a professional grade stuff, they, they tend to go one piece shaft too, and then you can't carry it in a car or a small SUV. This thing, very portable, 
and uh, not very expensive so you know let's say you're, you're doing a house refurbish in a bad neighborhood or something you leave this in the vehicle not the end of the world if you lose it the batteries you know that gets to be a little bit of an issue and next we're going to go out and test this thing okay so outside i've got a little bit of a drizzle and these lithium ion batteries the way that the mounting system works on this thing the vents on the battery are kind of covered up by the tool head but you know i'm not going to consider that waterproof so i'm not going to spend a lot of time out here you'll see this little pad on this this is so that it goes on your arm okay and kind of balances the uh you got to pull this little thumb trigger back in order to operate the main trigger not super lightweight not the best leverage unless you're using that four handle but i gotta hold the camera um power on this thing is okay you can tell that most of the power is coming from the battery not the size of the motor that string is not super heavy string and from the looks of the way they built the little motor head on these things you cannot replace the string with a blade so this is a mix of relatively heavy weeds that obviously needed to be weed eaten uh i got a little stretch over here that's kind of heavy and i did a little test stretch before turning the camera on it's uh you know let's get into this stuff uh, it will go through it okay and uh uh, Let's see how it looks with the heavier stuff. Okay, so if you get a look at those types of weeds, that stuff is kind of wet. And uh, it can gnaw through it. It just, uh, you know, it's not going to power through this stuff like crazy, okay? It doesn't have the blade. It's got the string. The string is not the super heavy duty stuff. And, uh, and then you got to worry about extending it. You know, you bump the thing to extend it a little bit. That's... I, yeah, I'm not going to say it's a shortcoming. They probably do that to make sure this thing's not going to burn itself up. But it's a usable weed eater for small jobs. Because you've got all that gas mixing and setup and screw around time. That you're going to run into with um, equipment that, let's say, you're, you know, you're going to do just a little front yard like this. You don't break your machine out that often. And you just want to get it done. And that's the big advantage of a cordless weed eater is you, you, you stick your battery in, you put it together, and you go. My setup time with this thing is just next to nothing. I can get the job done, but if I'm going to be working all day weed eating uh, and I just want to get a big job done, I, I got to go gas. And you probably got to go with something that's going to have a blade. But small jobs with little or no setup time where uh the setup time can really bite you like i i do a lot of on-call handyman type stuff this thing's definitely earned its way into the truck where i can tidy up a job in a hurry because i beat that setup time reliability of lithium ion batteries is well proven that's what these are based on which means that you can leave it charged for a long time and know then when you pick it up, it's going to work, okay? Lithium-ion batteries only lose about 10-20% of their char charge over the course of a year. The Nikad batteries, they'll lose 30% uh, uh, of the charge in a week, which means if you leave it in your truck, um, you know, and come out, a lot of times your Nikad batteries have gone bad. The other thing with the modern gas, if you're not using the stuff pretty darn frequently, it's not shell stabilized anymore, which means if you have lawn and garden equipment that's gas operated and you let it sit for a few weeks at a time, chances are the gas went bad. And then you gotta go to this gas station and buy gas and fill up your gas can and screw around with all that kind of stuff. 
that's where cordless really comes in because the gas just isn't good anymore. Uh, not, not for small power tools. I have Echo and I have uh, uh, some old McCulloch stuff. It used to be just fine and, and it would stop working. The guy at the saw shop told me, hey, it's the gas. So the next set of reviews I'm going to do is on the uh, chainsaw when it shows up. I would say this is pretty good and for the money, you're, you're not going to beat it. Not, not for the money. Uh, under $200 battery charger, tool head and everything. If you get one of those kind of Reebok return item things out of Amazon, you're getting it for under $150. That's a no-brainer. Go for it.